North America has 50 species of bumblebees, many of which are highly adaptive to small ecosystems and their plants. Native bees are experiencing a decline in population. 28% of all North American bumblebees are facing some degree of extinction risk. Like other wild animals, they suffer from habitat loss and chemical pesticides. This decline affects our gardens. Honeybees are not wild bees. They are domesticated. Like livestock, we raise them. Also, when we purchase honeybees, they typically come from Europe or Asia. Honeybees actually compete with native bumblebees for food. Honeybees are social insects. They live in large social colonies, and as many beekeepers can attest, honeybees can get quite defensive of their hives and sting intruders. I have raised honeybees and have a video on that as well. This video focuses on native bumblebees and how we can help them and how they are good for our gardens. Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome back or welcome to my channel where we discuss organic gardening, wildlife conservation, and environmental education topics. My next book coming out later this month will be on backyard wildlife gardening. You can check out some of my other books in the description. Bees are one of the only insects that deliberately gather pollen to bring back to their nests for their offspring. Butterflies, beetles, and flies visit flowers for nectar, and they accidentally transfer pollen but do not deliberately collect or store it like bees. Bumblebees live in small social colonies. Unlike honeybees, their colonies are much smaller with 50 to 400 individuals compared to the 50,000 in a typical honeybee hive. They will build a nest to raise young in the ground, in a rotten tree, or under the eaves of a building. The adorable bumblebee is the most common native bee species. Bumblebees have round bodies covered in soft hair called pilae, making them appear and feel fuzzy. They have a posmatic coloration meant to warn their enemies. In the case of bumblebees, it is stripes of contrasting colors. Not a bee, but certainly adorable. Bumblebees are one of the few pollinators capable of buzz pollination, a technique where they vibrate their flight muscles to shake pollen loose from certain flowers. This is essential for plants like tomatoes, peppers, blueberries, and cranberries, which require this vibration to release pollen. Bumblebees are highly effective pollinators. On a single foraging trip, a female bee may visit hundreds of flowers, transferring pollen the entire way. In contrast, when butterflies and moths visit flowers, they feed on nectar and not necessarily to collect pollen. Thus, they come in contact less frequently with the flower's anthers. Bumblebees have pollen baskets, corbicui, on the hind legs of honeybees. They also have special hairs on their legs, which help to carry and to help to gather and carry the pollen. If you are on a larger screen, I just love the way their legs look all glittery with the pollen. Bumblebees are much better adapted to cold temperatures than honeybees. I have a cool graphic on this in the blog post on bumblebees. Bumblebees can fly in temperatures as low as 32 degrees and tolerate higher, higher wind speeds when gathering pollen. They generate body heat by vibrating their flight muscles and warming themselves up. This is even a bumble, there is even a bumblebee that lives in the Arctic Circle. How do we attract bumblebees to our yards and gardens? By providing shelter, food, and water. Planting flowers around our homes and garden areas attracts bumblebees. In the last video, I talked about specific flowers like asters and echinacea that attract local pollinators. Many flowers do double duty. Chives, nasturtiums, and spearmint produce lots of pollen, so you can grow these for yourself and share with the bees. 
So for my suburban friends, don't do this. Dandelions are a great early food for bees. Also, the greens are delicious. Bumblebees are important for pollinating peppers and tomatoes. You may have varieties that are quote unquote self-pollinating. This is because they have both male and female parts. However, that does not mean that insects and wind for that matter are not important. This goes back to what I was saying about buzz pollination, something honeybees don't do. A recent study on sun gold cherry tomatoes, one of my favorites by the way, have shown that tomatoes pollinated by native bumblebees produced more fruit. Studies have also shown the fruits are larger. Bumblebees need shelter to raid, raise babies. Different species nest in different habitats. Some may like a bee box or an uncut corner of the lawn or to take over, or they might take over an abandoned mouse hole. I have a video on building a hibernaculum that provides winter shelter for insects, but will also be used in the summer. A shallow dish of water with some rocks so they have somewhere to land safely, or even better, a butterfly puddler to give them a drink during dry weather. If you live in the upper Midwest and see this guy, give a holler to the Department of Fish and Wildlife. This is the rusty patched bumblebee, and it is an endangered species. Its decline has been linked to pesticide use, another reason to grow organic. Remember, bumblebees are pretty docile, so just give them some space and you should be fine. I hope you found this video helpful. Leave a comment or a question and let me know what videos you would like to see. Thanks for watching and have a very sunny day.